Hey everybody, welcome back. My name is Jacob, and in this video we are going to be exploring and experimenting with Chrome Headless. Chrome Headless is, well, it's Chrome without the user interface, which I guess that's why they call it Headless. Whoever came up with that name was kind of weird. But anyways, it may be kind of useless sounding to a typical user, but for programmers like us, it can be super useful for things like taking screenshots or automated testing or anything you could possibly imagine that you'd want to script a browser to do and you wouldn't want to have to do manually. So let's get started. To start Chrome headless, we simply say Chrome dash dash to enable this flag. Headless. Simple as that. Although at the time of recording, um, you do also have to enable this flag, which is disable GPU, which I can imagine probably disables the GPU. Mm, probably. Oh, there. Okay, so we ran Chrome Headless, but it didn't do anything, so it exited right away because we didn't tell it to do anything. So what can we have it do? Well, we can have it take a screenshot. Exciting. Of course, it took a screenshot of nothing because we didn't tell it what page to go to. So we can also say HTTPS github.com and then it takes a screenshot so yay whoop de doo still not very exciting because I mean <laughs> this is the terminal this is the command line we want to actually be scripting this in of course Node.js the best language ever right but before we do that we have to open up uh, an interface so that our Node.js script can interact with it so I'm going to say remote debugging port equals 9222. This is going to open up a port on localhost. Oh, I forgot. I want to also navigate to HTTPS github.com. Sorry about that. So this remote debugging port option is going to open up port 9222 on localhost so that we can interact with it on our script. So I'm going to come over here to our code editor and uh, so I'm going to come over here to my code editor where I have this simple Node.js project set up. All that you have to do to emulate this setup is create a new Node.js project and download and install this package, chrome-remote-interface. Once you have that done, you can continue following along with this tutorial. So I'm going to say CDP and call this as a function, and we give it some options. Host, local host. We're pointing it to what running instance we have going right now. And um, host and port, which is 9222. Wonderful. And then in here, we have a callback, which I'm going to make asynchronous. And we get a client is what I'm going to call it here. All right. Now this client has a bunch of what are well, what's inside of it is called domains. We have a bunch of domains. That's what they're called in the API, which I've linked in the description. Check it out. It's pretty cool. We have these domains. Um, and the one I'm going to be using for this simple demonstration is page, the page domain. And we'll use the destructuring assignment that's new in JavaScript. I so love it. Um, and take that out of the client like that. And there we have our page domain. We also have to enable it, which that's an asynchronous operation. So I'm going to say await. I also love the new async await. So await page.enable like that. Now we can use the page domain. And I'm going to say page dot cap cap screenshot and give it some options, actually only one, and that is format PNG because, well, I mean, the only other option is JPEG. And of course, who wants that? This is also an asynchronous method. So I'm going to say await that. And this returns our um, our screenshot encoded in base 64 it actually returns an object that contains a data property that contains the base 64 encoded image data so I'm just gonna say let data equal that and we'll use destructuring yet again so useful love it like that 
And now we have our base 64 encoded screenshot. And I'm just gonna write it to the file system because of course we would. Um, I'm gonna use the name screenshot.png again. So I'm going to remove screenshot.png real quick. And now we'll say file system dot write file. What name? Screenshot.png. Uh, what data? Data, of course. What encoding? Base 64. And finally, our error callback. Hopefully we don't have any errors, but you never know. And I'll just console.error that one. Oh yeah. And finally, we close our connection to the client. Otherwise, our script will just hang and hang until we hard close the, the uh, client, which is obviously not the greatest. So now, let's run our script and see if it works. Node index.js. Wait a sec. All right, it generated the screenshot. Moment of truth. Hey, look. GitHub.com. Beautiful. And one last nifty thing we can do is say localhost 9222. Check, make sure this is actually exactly what we're looking at. And indeed it is. By the way, this is really nifty interface where you can actually interact with your headless instance via the browser. Kind of cool, but if you ask me, it's, I mean, it's cool and sort of useful, but you might as well just open up GitHub in your browser and open the actual dev tools instead of work with headless instance. Anyways, guys, there you go. That is how you very simply script Chrome headless. I think it's pretty cool. It's a really great API. Like I said, take a look at the link I provided in the description to the API. It's, it's pretty well documented, although be warned, it is kind of complex because you can basically emulate any action that you could imagine. I mean, you can do anything, just about anything that the user would do in their browser with the inter user interface. So it's a little bit complex, but extremely useful. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Hope you learned something from it. Don't forget to subscribe. My name is Jacob, and have a good one.